positron emission tomography, or PET, radiopharmaceuticals have higher energy gammas than the radiopharmaceuticals used in conventional nuclear medicine facilities. These higher energy gammas are harder to shield and are a source of increased exposure. Fluorine-18 is the isotope used in the production of fluorodeoxyglucose, or FDG, the most commonly used radiopharmaceutical in PET imaging. Look at this comparison between the higher energy photons of fluorine-18 and the photons of iodine-131 and technetium-99M, both of which are used in conventional nuclear medicine. Note the significantly higher energy from fluorine-18 photons than from the iodine-131 photons, which is usually the highest energy radiopharmaceutical used in nuclear medicine. The exposure rate constant, or ERC, of a radionuclide is the exposure rate in Rankin per hour at 1 centimeter from a 1 millicurie source. The ERC for PET radiopharmaceuticals is higher than the exposure rate constant for more conventional nuclear medicine radiopharmaceuticals. This can result in higher radiation dose exposure for PET facility employees. The ERC for FDG is 5.7 Rankin per hour per millicurie. If we compare FDG to the technetium 99M, we see that the ERC is about 0.6 Rankin per hour per millicurie, which is about one-tenth that of the FDGs. This means that for two doses of the same activity, the F18 dose would give eight to ten times more exposure than the technetium 99M. Also, you will notice that the ERC for fluorine-18 is 2.6 times higher than the iodine-131, which is 2.18 Rankin per hour per millicurie. The concept of exposure rate constant can be used to generate equivalent activities for fluorine-18, technetium-99M, and iodine-131 that give the same dose rates in air. An 18 millicurie dose of FDG would give off the same radiation exposure as a 180 millicurie bulk technetium 99M dose or a 47 millicurie therapy dose of iodine 131. This means that the FDG doses give off much more radiation than the typical technetium 99M doses used in general nuclear medicine. Let's look at two photon characteristics, half-life and average positron energy. Positron energy dictates travel distance. Half-life is the amount of time required for a radioactive isotope to lose half of its radioactivity through the process of decay. Fluorine-18 is a good choice for PET imaging. First, it has a longer half-life than most other positron emitters, so it can be shipped. Without this characteristic, an in-house cyclotron would be needed to produce the pharmaceuticals. Also, its lower energy positron means it travels less distance in the body before an annihilation event, which improves spatial resolution when imaging. If there is a spill, the spill should be covered if possible to contain the positrons and minimize contamination. Although fluorine-18's half-life of 110 minutes is long enough to allow for shipping, it also means F-18 will go through 10 half-lives in about 18.3 hours. Therefore, waste management is not a concern with FDG because by the next day, the waste from the previous day has decayed away to background. Nor would an internal dose be highly unsafe in the unlikely event of ingestion. Ventilation is not a concern in a PET facility since unit doses are most often used and handling is reduced to a minimum. Half-value layer is a convenient way to express the attenuation properties of a material for photons. Half-value layer is defined as the amount of material needed to reduce the intensity of a radiation source to one half of its original intensity. This value is normally expressed as thickness. The half-value layer for FDG in lead is 3.85 millimeters. The half-value layer for technetium 99M in lead is 0.3 millimeters. The half-value layer for iodine-131 in lead is 3 millimeters. We know the 511 keV photons in FDG require more shielding. Lead is not sufficient. Tungsten is the material most commonly used in shielding FDG for several reasons. First, it has a density of 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter compared with 11.35 grams per cubic centimeter for lead. This high density provides greater radiation attenuation while allowing a reduction in overall size and weight of the shield. Tungsten also has a high rigidity modulus. This allows for the manufacturing of direct threaded closures. 
And finally, its tensile strength, comparable with steel, allows it to withstand everyday use.